My name is Todd Preter and I'm with Professional Control Corporation and today we're here to talk about the Helmholtz Propinet to Ethernet IP coupler. One of the benefits of an Ethernet IP coupler versus a gateway is that there's no additional configuration software tools needed. So we can use our Propinet configuration tool to actually set up the uh, coupler and then take a, a file from that and bring it into our, our Ethernet IP side of things or the uh, Ethernet IP software. So um, what I have to display today is actually I've got a Rockwell PLC here with a push button station wired into it um, and a light. Uh, it's a multicolor function light here. In the center, I have a Propinet switch, which is connected. Actually, it's an Ethernet switch, I'm sorry, connected to uh, the Rockwell controller. And then that is connected to one side of my coupler, the Ethernet IP side. And then I also have on the other side of that coupler, I go to an Ethernet switch to an S7-1200 PLC, which is wired up to my little push button over here and to this stack light from Q-Light. Um, what we will do then is uh, take the uh, configuration. And in order to start out, we have to actually have uh, a GSDML file. Um, so what I figured we would do is we'll go straight to the Helmholtz website quickly here, and we'll grab that GSDML file. So we can find that GSDML file by going to Field Bus Applications, Ethernet IP, Propinet Ethernet IP Coupler, scroll down here, Software and Drivers, and download this GSDML file. Now this file we would bring into our tool uh, for configuration. And the tool that we're going to use today is the TIA Portal Software version 16. So um, if we go into our device configuration screen here, we can see in the network view that we currently do not have uh, this particular gateway or uh, coupler in our, our listing. We do have a different one from Helmholtz that does Profibus to Profinet, but we do not have the Ethernet IP one. So what we would do is we would go to our options here, Manage General Station Description Files, which is GSD. And then we're going to go find that file that we downloaded, which we would need to unzip. Um, I actually have this thing uh, on my desktop in this demo folder, so I'm going to select it, <clears throat> and then we install it. So as this install utility goes through, it's adding it to the catalog so that you can use it at any time in the future, so it'll always be in that catalog. And it does take a minute for this to happen. Uh, once it's there, we can close, and it will update the hardware catalog for us. Okay, so now we can go and we can take a look at our device configuration here again. And if we go to the network view and we go to our other field devices, Profinet IO gateways, in the Helmholtz folder, you'll now see that there's a Profinet to Ethernet IP coupler. And we can take and drag that out here to our network view. We then assign it to our Profinet controller, which in this case is an S7-1200 PLC. We double click on him and then we have to set up our assembly instances. So um, that's a Rockwell term or a, a EBS type file term. Uh, so we need to have a new input assembly here. And under that input assembly, we're going to just do two bytes of unsigned integer for now. Um, but you can configure this how you really need. And then uh, we'll do an output assembly as well. So we'll say a new output assembly. And we'll also do two bytes of unsigned integer uh, for that. Okay. Now if we go to the actual device here and we bring um, the property screen up, uh, you can see that by default it assigned an IP address here of 192.168.2.1. That's actually because my controller is at 192.168.2.111. Um, so it, it added it to the first available address on this subnet. I actually want to change this to be at 112 so that it's close to the PLC and just so that we have a different address that we can work with. Um, and then under the module parameters here, this is actually where we would set up the uh, 
Ethernet IP side of things. So um, we want it to be a static IP address. And uh, my Allen Bradley PLC in this case is set to 192.168.1.211. Um, I'm going to set my uh, coupler up to 1.100. Okay. The, uh, the other things that are in here, um, you can mess around with if you'd like, but there's, there's really no great reason to in most cases, and unless your configuration requires it. Uh, but there is a web page. Um, that web page is at, accessible on both sides of the coupler if you want it to be, or you could actually turn one side off or the other. And then uh, this device does have uh, the ability to um, use MQTT, which is a current uh, protocol to push data to the cloud. Um, so we could turn that on if we wanted to. Now, uh, an important thing to note on our PLC side of things, um, the input bytes here are showing up as outputs and the output bytes are showing up as inputs. And that's really because that's, it's the opposite of what, you, um, what you're going to see. So this is the Ethernet IP side of things essentially. Okay, so um, we're gonna write to these addresses and we're gonna read from these addresses. Now, once this is done, we can download this. And it's going to give us a couple warning messages. We're going to say, go ahead and load it. And it will load this configuration in and restart the PLC. And if I toggle this back over now, you should see the PLC is working towards going into the run mode. Now this may take a bit of time. Okay, so now the PLC did go into run, um, but we do have a fault light. And this is really based on the fact that the device itself does not have um, the PROFINET name assigned to it yet. So we can right click on this device and we go here to assign the device name, update our list, which will search the network now for devices that uh, don't have uh, PROFINET names. And we'll see here that it does, it finds a device. There is no IP address, even though we've downloaded an IP address because Profinet really functions on the device name. So once we select our device, we can say assign the name. I should have moved that over a little bit so you can see it. But now you can see that it's up and our controller now um, will come up and show us that we are running and everything turns green. Okay, so now we'll open up the web page on the coupler. Uh, the IP address was 192.168.2.112. And we get a security risk uh, page that pops up because we have not configured this guy and the certificate hasn't been assigned yet. Um, so we'll accept the risk and we're gonna continue. And now, because this is a default out of the box, we will need to give it a, a password. Um, so make sure it's a password that you can remember. It needs to be eight characters. Um, submit that. And now we are ready to roll here. So you can see that uh, this page has a lot of different things on it. We can factory reset the device. We can do firmware updates. We can download certificates, uh, change the password. If we were going to enable the MQTT function to push data to the cloud, we could do that through here. Um, and then we can see in our module configuration here uh, the different uh, slots that are set up for the input and output assemblies. And then under Ethernet IP, we would go here. You can see the IP address that's set up. And we can download the EDS file. So the EDS file is how we're going to configure this in the Rockwell side of the software. So now that that's downloaded, we would open up our Rockwell software. And under Tools here, 
we're going to select EDS hardware installation tool and we're going to go and find that EDS file which we put up on the desktop here and do a bunch of nexts which will then add it to the catalog and now when we go and we get to um, this Ethernet section here we can right click and um, add a new module and I'm going to clear all of these guys and scroll down and just grab the system Helmholtz one so there it is we'll say create and now we have to give it a name um, that name is going to be used for your tags and actually I set up a bunch of tags prior to this so um, to make this all work properly I need to make sure I use the same name uh, but you can put in what you'd like there the IP address is uh, what we've configured for the Ethernet IP side, which would be 100 for this, okay? And then we just need to make sure that our assembly instances follow what we did, which was an output assembly and an input assembly, and that they're just basically two bytes, okay? Say OK. <clears throat> Say OK here. And now that's added to our configuration, okay? Um, at this point, we would then need to um, take our cable and move it from uh, the Profinet side to the Ethernet IP side so that we're able to communicate. And then um, at this point, I'll give it a second to catch up a little bit usually, but uh, we can open up our logic maybe. And then under communications here, we can do uh, a who active and download our configuration. And do we want to go back to remote run? We'll say yes. So now our controller is running. Okay, so now you can see I've got a tag here called Helmholtz coupler to 1200 which is toggling a counter, and that counter is accumulator that I'm using to turn on the lights. Um, so if I toggle over now so that you can see this, and I go ahead and talk, well, basically remind you that I've got this Allen Bradley controller wired to this push button station and this uh, LED light. And then I've got the Siemens controller over here wired to this push button and this stack light. So this button is going to turn on this light and this button is going to turn on this light. Okay, so if I turn on a button or push the button on the, uh, on the Siemens side of things here. Um, sorry. It now um, toggles through and does its thing. And you can see the bits are turning on at different points. Um, if I then uh, want to do this with the uh, with the Siemens side of things, I should probably go offline first here. So I'm going to turn off the online for Rockwell, move my cable here now over to the Siemens side of the coupler. Okay. And then I'm going to toggle this back so that you can see this. We'll go over here to the main program block for the Siemens controller. Um, I'm going to put the glasses on. And then I'm going to just uh, scroll this down a little bit so we can see all of the lights, okay? And um, so now you can see that none of the lights are on right now. Um, if I go ahead and toggle this back over so that you can see it again. Um, now when I press the start button here, you can see the lights are coming on. Um, it's not starting at zero and working its way up because this uh, had already been in the middle of a count, but uh, it gives you the, uh, the, you know, the obvious uh, transfer of data. So um, I guess uh, that with that, I'm going to wrap it up and say, um, you know, the Helmholtz Ethernet IP to Profinet coupler is a pretty simple thing to set up. Um, and this demonstration hopefully helped to uh, solidify that. If you need any further information, feel free to uh, reach out and check uh, www.pccweb.com. Or if you're looking for manuals or, or that type of stuff, um, if you go to the helmholtz.de website, you can get that information. Thank you very much.